Hi, uh, good evening. How are you doing today? Yes, good evening, sir. I am fine. Thank you. How about you? I am also doing fine. Thank you. Um, so, have you had a chance to go through the session notes for today? Ah, uh, yes, I have uh, gone through that. All right. And what do you think about the topic? <laughs> okay, it's quite interesting. Like for a male to talk about makeup, I was like, I was like thinking, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just about. I was also thinking the same thing. Um, <laughs> but are you okay to talk about it? The first, I would uh, love to go with the introduction section as we are meeting for the first time. I would love right. to know about yourself a bit as well, and I would love to say about myself as well. All right. Who would you like to go first? Me or you? Me. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So go ahead. Tell me something about this. Okay. okay. Thank you. So as you know, my name is Ashutosh Devedi, and I'm speaking to you from Kanpur city of Uttar Pradesh. Mm -hmm. And about my education, I have pursued my degree that is BCom Honours Accounting from Banaras in the university. And mm -hmm. now I'm pursuing my master's that is master's of arts in English literature. And along with that, I do run a YouTube channel, which is based on spoken English conversations. That's all about me. Thank you. All right. Uh, as for me, I my name is uh, Ruru Basu Malik, as you know already. And uh, I have been working, I had been working as an English voice and accent trainer uh, for many years. I worked as a freelancer. I worked in companies like IBM, Accenture, First Source. Uh, I used to train people to speak like Americans and uh, British <laughs> Britishers. Uh, so these were mainly for uh, business process outsourcing clients. So, mm -hmm. you know, call center employees. So my job yes. was to basically train call center employees so that they could be floor ready. That's the term that mm -hmm. they would use uh in the corporate world so that's about me right now i run a small uh, business of my own but i don't want to lose touch with teaching and uh, that's why i'm here okay that's nice so where are you uh like you know like okay, i mean I to am, say that I am, city or i am right now i am in kolkata west bengal okay so is it your birthplace it's my birthplace. Okay, and but when you used to work with the companies, you used to be in other cities? Yes, I used to be in Bangalore. I was based in Bangalore at that point of time. Okay, but now you're back to Kolkata. But now I'm back to Kolkata. Regretting it, but- Just due to COVID-19 or like what was the reason to come back? I had multiple Bangalore. reasons to come back. Uh, there were some <laughs> personal reasons uh, for me to come back. Uh, but yeah, here I am. <laughs> so how do you feel now? Uh, just, you know, I miss the Bangalore weather. Oh, just it's, it was okay in Bangalore, according to you, right? Yeah, it was fantastic. The weather was fantastic. Never too hot, never too cold. Uh, and even if it got hot for say three or four days, it would always rain on the fourth or the fifth day and cool things down. Mm -hmm. But uh, no such luck here. Although right now the weather here in Kolkata is not that bad. Uh, it's been quite cloudy. I'm sure that uh, it's the same there in UP as well. Ah, in yes, in right? UP as well. Fortunately, nowadays it's not that much hot. Basically, we expect the temperature uh, like, you know, 40, 45 in these days. But nowadays mm -hmm. it's only like 35 to 40, I think. And even though lesser than that. So it's quite cloudy and not that much hot. April, it was there, but from the last few days, due to the rain or due to the cloudy weather, it's a normal temperature, even though in May as well. I don't yeah. really think so that it will be continue for a long, maybe in June, it will be too hot. The extremely hot weather will be there. Yeah, I just read a report that uh, there is a depression forming in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, it's mm -hmm. there so there is a cyclone forming uh in okay. the bay of bengal 
and it will probably be approaching Bengal in the next, I don't know, one week, 10 days. Okay. So are you prepared for that mentally? So <laughs> we've, uh, we've been experiencing one cyclone each year since uh, 2020. So in 2020, along with uh, COVID, we also had to deal with this cyclone called Amphan, which was which, which had wind speeds of up to 100 and 120 kilometers. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes. So it was so terrible with the just, you know, this kind of disease, like another you know, COVID infection was there and then people had to help each other due to the water or like cyclone. So it was very difficult, I think. So. It was extremely difficult. Uh, the cyclone mm -hmm. was not very difficult. I mean, okay, it came and it went away. Uh, mm -hmm. But the aftermath was mm -hmm. terrible. In fact, I had gone to the coastal areas after the cyclone uh, to work with the people who, who've been affected by the cyclone. So you could see that uh, people's homes have had been completely washed away or blown away. And mm -hmm. uh, there were like, so there were these ponds which were supposed to be freshwater ponds, but what had happened was seawater had come in and come into those uh, and come into those ponds, and you could see that the dead fish were come lying all over the surface of the mm -hmm. water. Mm. So yeah, it was terrible for that matter. I am sure that right now, if a cyclone like that hits West Bengal, maybe we are a little more prepared. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So nowadays you're living with your family, is it? I, I am, I live on my own. Okay. It means you're in Kolkata also, just your family is not there. Uh, no, I, I live on my own. Okay. Okay. Right. I got so it. Tell me about yourself a little bit. So you, uh, you. You are uh, studying uh, English literature. Yes, I am okay. pursuing my master's. Mm -hmm. Master's in English literature. What are you reading right now? To be honest, I will tell you. Basically, I was the student of accounting, but uh -huh. I wanted to pursue this master's for the sake of degree. I'm more into spoken English. I would like to see myself as a podcast host. And as I told you that I'm running a YouTube channel. So what I do, I don't go to, I don't go college regularly. I do study only like, you know, when there are examinations because mm -hmm. I'm not able to focus more on the, this degree or this literature or the part, theory part. Basically, I'm into speaking. I'm doing a lot of conversations. I would like to improve my communication skill and the podcasting skill. That's what I do. And I'm living far from my family so I can... Uh, make my day productive and I can work on myself. I can explore my hobbies. So that's what I do. My day looks like what I do from the morning. I'm booking sessions. And sometimes I have sessions with the people who are not the part of clapping or race fluency. Maybe the people are from other like you know, parts of the country or they have been just, you know, doing really well with the communication. So I would like to have interaction with them and I would like to have, upload such kind of conversations. And mm -hmm. apart from this, I explore whatever I want. And uh, I mean to say that I am into photography, singing, and uh, I would like to know a little bit more about the spirituality as well. So such kind of things I explore. And then I do conduct sessions for the students as well. Even though I'm same part of time, I'm learning from just you people. And along with that, I'm trying to help others uh, so they can speak better as well. That's what I do most of the oh, day okay although one pro tip is you should probably inculcate a reading habit uh -huh. yeah in that reading of course i do read sometimes uh, but to be honest i will tell you that i'm not much into reading uh, but uh, before i was just reading a book that is think like a monk written by jay shetty before that i read a book that is the psychology of money written by morgan hosel so mm -hmm. I do read sometimes articles, sometimes books, but I'm not more into reading. I do like 
consuming content on YouTube a lot with the great content creators. I see. Okay. How did you like uh, Psychology of Money? It's actually one of my favorite books. I think I've it blew my mind. I really like that. Yeah, it was wonderful, actually. You know, there is a difference being rich and wealthy. What I understood. If mm -hmm. you would like to show off that you are rich, of course you aren't. So yeah. <laughs> if you are truly rich, of course you wouldn't love to show off. So exactly. I understood the reality, and uh, and as I told you that nowadays I'm into spirituality as well and exploring a lot of things. So I understood that is not something which is going to give you the permanent pleasure as well. So you mm -hmm. will have to chase, chase, chase. Of course, the figures will change, like now 20, then 40, now 60, then 80. But of course, you will be having the expenses. You will be having a lot of desires. And after that, also at the end of the day, maybe you will feel a little incomplete. So, yeah, very much so. It is very uh -huh. important to invest. What I understood from that book, it is very important to invest. It is very important to save without having any reason as well. You will have to save for the sake of saving. So mm -hmm. yeah, such kind of things I have understood from the book. What about what about uh, this other book that you told me about, uh, Jay Shetty's book? Uh, that is Think Like a Monk. That is really marvelous, mind blowing. I must say, he has uh, just you know shared the experience uh, because he was a, a monk in India for three years. Basically, mm -hmm. he was born and raised in London. Then he was uh, back to India for three years. He stayed here as a monk for three years. So he has said, so that's why the title says the think like a monk, even mm -hmm. though if you are living some anywhere, but you can do or you can have the perspective same like monks, you can pay the gratitude for everything, whatever you have. So such kind of things are mentioned there and it's very nice. I see. I'm enjoying. Okay. So have you finished the book or are you, are you still reading? No, actually what I do, uh, no, I haven't finished totally. It depends on me. I just go and open the book. And I do read the like, you know, the subtitle that, of course, if it is going to suit uh, me for this period of time, I'll read that. So I, I haven't completed, but I go whenever I get time, I would like to read the subtitle. So uh, I mean to say that the parts of the chapters. I see. OK, OK. Um, you also said that you are interested in spirituality. In what uh, what ways are you uh, say involving yourself in spirituality involving of course like you know i would like to know the answers of such questions uh, the what is the ultimate goal what is life why we are here for and uh, actually what can give us the ultimate uh, like you know, happiness mm -hmm. uh, that is just you know cycle of uh, happiness on sadness but why we don't we are not able to find out that ultimate bliss. So actually, I'm trying to find out the answers of those questions by consuming a lot of content related to spirituality. Of course, I do follow a lot of people like Sadhguru, Gaur Gopal Das, and uh, Mahatre, and uh, several, I think, you know, content creators are there. So mm -hmm. Jay also, Jay is also giving a lot of wisdom. So that's how I'm trying to become better. And that is very deep, I think. I can't say that uh, what I'm exploring and uh, because it's it's like an ocean. It's so, like an ocean. Yes, it's like an ocean. Mm -hmm. It's probably bigger than an ocean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I ocean don't even know like what I'm trying to know and what I know. Yeah. Right. You can also try uh, listening to this uh, monk called uh, Sarva Priyananda. Oh, okay. He's, uh, he's a monk uh, uh, from the order of Ramakrishna Mission. Uh, mm -hmm. He's from Belur Mot. Belur Mot is uh, here in uh, Bengal. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is where Vivekananda and Ramakrishna, uh, Ramakrishna attained their uh, uh, enlightenment. enlightenment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he's from that order of monks, but uh, he is presently, I think, a resident monk in uh, the Vedanta Society of New York. So mm -hmm. he gives these very, very nice uh, lectures mm -hmm. on the meaning yeah. of life, how to meditate better, if you're into meditation, that is, of course, how to meditate better. He's, he's, I think you will like it. If, you, if you're already into this kind of uh, content, mm -hmm. I think you can give him a go. 
Yes, of course, I would love to try. So even though I, uh, the philosophy, <laughs> philosophy also attracts me a lot because mm -hmm. there is a lot of philosophies, uh, uh, just a Kabir and a lot of people like who gave the different philosophies. So mm -hmm. sometimes I try uh, like, you know, watching the content related to philosophy as well. So actually what I feel after when you go up to those subjects, like psychology is something and philosophy is something, spirituality is something where the person would like to deep down. And of course, it is very difficult to explore everything like, you know, like but yes. of course, as we go deep, we find more interest and more questions to find answers. Yeah, it's called like, it's like going into the rabbit hole. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm sure you know of Alice in Wonderland, the story of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, no, not really. Okay, so Alice in Wonderland was a fairy, fairy kind of a, like a fairy story that we mm -hmm. read as we, when we were growing up. And uh, there is this mm -hmm. expression called going down the rabbit hole. Going down the rabbit hole basically mm -hmm. means that you are deep diving into some topic. Mm -hmm. so you, yes. you scratch the surface and then you see, okay, wow, there's a lot of interesting things here. So you kind of go deeper <laughs> down into it. And then you keep going and you keep burrowing into it and you keep going down into that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you are tackling very interesting subjects, psychology, philosophy, and uh, spirituality. So like, uh, I'm curious to know that uh, what about your like uh, day, how your day looks like and what is the most important and interesting part of the day for you? My day starts- Maybe you get free time, what you early. would like to do. Yeah, my day starts very early. I start at 5.30 in the morning. I start taking classes from six. Uh, mm -hmm. So I take classes till about nine. Then I take a break. I have tea, I sit down with a book, I read for about an hour, uh, mm -hmm. then I do a little bit of my own work, which is basically my, uh, which is related to my business. And uh, then I start taking classes again at around uh, one or two, depends on the day. Um, okay. I take classes till about three, then lunch, uh then some more classes mm -hmm. so yeah uh i spend most of my day interacting with a lot of interesting people oh that's great and how long have you been doing it so far as you said that you were into offline uh, actually job where you used to train people but what about right. now this online so now, profession since i've got uh, since i've started this i have been on this platform for about uh, 3 months so 3 months Okay. Now, uh, I have scheduled my day to a very large extent around this platform because I like it so much. Uh, but yes, this is uh, all this is along with the other things that I do along with the other things that are important. to me. Yeah, that's great to hear about your day. It's quite interesting.